Hello folks, today I'm going to show you my settings for PHD2. Now, this is not a tutorial on how to use on how to use PHD2 because I'm not really an expert there. But all I ever do is I, I hit connect, I hit refresh, I pick a guide star, and I hit begin. That that's basically all I do to run it. So I I don't do anything else. But I've had a lot of requests of people wanting to know what my settings are. And that I can do. I, I can share with you how my settings look, and hopefully that helps you in the future if you have something set differently. And and I got a disclaimer. That guiding you saw was from last night, and that's when it was performing at its best. Um, usually, if I'm pointing too low, I have a hard time keeping the RMS error under 1.0. But as the mount tracks higher, it, it, it guides better, and my stars look better. And I can only guess it's probably because the weight of the, the, the counterweights in the telescope, the balance is shifting a little, and it performs better when the mount starts to guide or track higher. But I'm not going to go out there and, and keep messing with the balance of the weight to make sure it's optimal. So maybe I should only maybe point at objects that are reasonably high in the sky, maybe 35 degrees or higher. Below 35 degrees, I, I notice I just don't track that well. Okay, so let's start. Now, when I said I, I connect, refresh, and pick a guide, start and begin, I actually don't even do that anymore. Since I've been plate solving, uh, Sequence Generator Pro does all that for me. I'm completely out of the loop. Uh, SG Pro will launch PhD2, find my guide, start, track, and there's, there's really nothing left for me to do in this software. But uh, let's start going through my settings. So the first thing I'll do is uh, let's hit connect, and I'll show you what's going on there. Uh, for camera, I'm using a Starlight Express Lodestar X2 guide camera, and that's what I selected in the drop-down box. So you're going to select whatever whatever guide camera you have. And I installed my Celestron Telescope ASCOM driver, and I'm connecting to my laptop um, from the handset to the laptop with the USB cable. I don't even have a serial cable anymore. My mount doesn't need one. And I'm not using an SD4 telephone line. This replaces that, that telephone line. But if you were using a telephone line, um, like I was before this, I would just select on camera. And, and that's all I had to do. So let me go back to my Celestron driver. And, and, and that's all I had. Oh, one more thing about this uh, for uh, using the ASCON driver. It's in my case, and I know my friend Doug, who also has a CGX mount, we had to go in here and make sure a COM port was selected. And this COM port actually relates to USB ports on my laptop. And my, my uh, telescope from the handset to the laptop has to be plugged into a specific USB port. I've got three USB ports on my laptop, and it wants to be plugged into the first one. I have no idea why, but that's when it recognizes as COM4. And it took me a while to figure that out, that it has to be very specific. But once you know it, um, it's the same every time, and, and I'm good to go. And then I can just hit Connect All. Yeah, let's get rid of this. This is my hand controller, left, left, right, up, down control. I don't need that. Okay, so once you connect, you're going to see this row... Of, of numbers here, and um, I, I got these from here and there on the web, other people giving me advice, and I'm just going to read my settings off to you for this right, or not right, this uh, right ascension aggression is 6.5, hysteresis is 10, this min-mo is uh, 0 0.04, deck aggression is 70, min-mo is 0 0.05 there, um, the scope Max RA is 1,500, and the max deck is 2,500. And if you're uncertain what you really need for your telescope, there is a guiding assistant. I don't, use, I don't use it, but if you click this guiding assistant, it will track your performance for a little while, and then it will actually make suggestions that you can then use to populate these values. A lot of people swear by the guiding assistant, 
I, I never used it. I don't know why. Maybe I should. So that, that's that row. And let's just uh, go up to the top here. No, actually, let's go down to the braid. That's where all of the, the, the other settings are. So I'm going to click on the brain. And now we're in the advanced setup. And I'm, I'm on the, the first tab, global. And I don't recall actually using this tab before. So what you see here is probably everything that came by default. And um, <clears throat> if you just want to look at that screen, I'm, hopefully you, you can see this in the video. I don't know how clear it is until I'm done. But uh, the dither settings, I, it, it says random. Spiral, it was already selected as random. I never touched it. And scale 1.0. Okay. Let's go to camera settings. For noise reduction, I'm using 2x2, two two, time lapse 0, auto exposure 1 second, max 5 seconds, target SNR 6. And the camera specific properties. Um, I, I can't really see that, but that's specific, I'm sure, to my own camera settings, the, the pixel size of my guide camera settings. And let me just cancel this for a second. I don't think it will let me get in there while I'm connected. So let's disconnect. Close. Okay. Yeah, 8.3, that's the, the pixel size for my, my guide camera. And disconnect non-responsive camera after 15 seconds. Okay, I don't know how important that is, not a big deal. Uh, let's go into guiding. Uh, let's see, search region pixels I have set for 15. Star mass detection I have set for 50.0 and enable checked. Calibration, and I, my friend Pete never has to calibrate PhD2. Every time he goes out, it's already calibrated. He has a permanent peer, and I'm, I'm guessing that he probably has this auto restore calibration checked. That's probably how he he brings back his calibration from previous days. I, I'm just guessing there. I don't use that. I calibrate every night I go out at the start of the session. And I also have this box checked. Uh, use deck compensation. Uh-oh, why did this number change? What if I cancel that? Let's go back in there. Ah. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I, it, it was like that. I, was, I thought it was 50, but 50 is up there. Never mind, I'm good. <laughs> okay, uh, shared parameters. I only have always scale images checked. And I have these two buttons on the right check, not buttons, but check boxes. The first one says fast recenter after calibration on dither. And the other one is enable mount guide output. So that's what the guiding tab looks like. And on the algorithms tab, I have uh, for the right extension, I have hysteresis selected, hysteresis 10, 65.04, those seem to match up with the numbers I had selected in this row here. <clears throat> and then decla declination, I have resist switch, and then 70.05, 2,500 here. And I have selected a fast switch for large deflections. And uh, my friend Doug was getting, was not guiding well in, in his deck, he was getting a lot of corrections, and he actually had hysteresis selected for his declination. And once he switched it to resist switch, it, it performed a lot better. Mine was already set up that way. It probably just was like that from the start at by default. And uh, this is really all I've got to share with you. That that's that's all my settings that I I can think of. You connect. All again. Sorry right, if you hear that plane in the background. I, I'm not far from the airport and I'm doing this outside of my garage. Let's get rid of that. And and the rest is uh, 
uh, the, these values here, that just controls what you see on the graph. And I take a lot of grief because I like to use a big scale, but a lot of people, uh, they like, they'll make their, their scale uh, down, bring it down to four so they can get a better idea of, of the spikes you can see in the graph. They're easier to see what's going on. But I, I'll keep it at eight. Or what was I before? 16? I don't know. I like leaving it there. Maybe because I like looking at flat lines makes me makes me feel good. Um, that's all I've got to share. Uh, last night I was out trying to capture the Wizard Nebula. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep that data because I got a lot of uh, bad data. My neighbors had their backyard light on and I was pointing too low in the north and the guiding wasn't performing that well. It only started guiding really well later in the evening and I don't have enough data. So... I might start looking for objects that are higher up instead of trying to get a head start on these nebulas. Maybe go back to doing galaxies. I haven't decided yet. But uh, thanks for listening. I'll see you later.